Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media. We've got another installment of the monthly reviews roundup. We go over uh, stuff that came out this past month of February. We got a lot of projects that came out, I think about 22, that I reviewed this past month and gave it a score out of 10. Uh, and we're gonna start with one that I actually forgot to do in the last video. I reviewed it before in January, but I forgot about it, but uh, it is Kimbra's A Reckoning. Uh, Kimbra is quite popular uh, as being the vocal feature from Gautier, somebody that I used to know back in the early 2010s, but uh, she's done a bunch of solo stuff since then, but uh, yeah, this new uh, album uh, with production from Sun Lux here, uh, Sun Lux is Ryan Lott, I should say, uh, A Reckoning is often a eerie alt-pop record with sharp synths and raw vocal performances. Uh, that being said, this project often feels wayward and without direction. Uh, the best tracks in this LP are solemn, thought-provoking tracks, yet don't make up even half of the runtime. Uh, there are very definitive, uh, a few best tracks, I would say here, but uh, I would love to see those sounds explored more on uh, the album. But uh, yeah, overall, I thought it was okay. Uh, and with that, Kimra's Reckoning is going to score a Bowtide 6. Then we've got Fox Stevenson, the Enemy Brain Entertainment Suite EP. Uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous project. Teetering back and forth between house and drum and bass, Fox Stevenson feels like he's in his prime with an almost 30-minute EP. This thing is massive. Uh, with a variety of tones uh, throughout the track list coupled with its length, uh, it's got to be one of the better EPs out there just period. Uh, Fox Stevenson brings some of the smoothest, some of his smoothest and finest production uh, to the project, culminating in what I believe to be his best project to date. And with that, the uh, Fox Stevenson Enemy Brain Entertainment Suite EP scores a Bowtide 9 out of 10. Uh, and then we've got Midas, the Memories EP. Uh, this EP is by far uh, Midas' weakest project to date. <laughs> I'm taking the back and forth from Fox Stevens of this, but uh, yeah, taking a more slowed down atmospheric approach to this EP, uh, the production feels very flat and linear. Uh, even the sections in which Midas tackles a more mellow dub sound, it winds up feeling a lot like a 2016 Millennium ripoff. It doesn't quite feel like Midas put a lot of heart and soul into this project, leaving it quite lifeless. Uh, and with that, Midas' Memories EP is going to score a Bowtide 3. Uh, then we got Snail's House, uh, the Lumi album. Uh, this album is quite a relaxing listen, uh, leaning more into the ambient and atmospheric ends of Future Bass. Uh, this record is a feel-good project through and through. Uh, that being said, I didn't quite find the instrumentation overly captivating compared to other albums of a similar tone. Uh, it's definitely a cohesive and sonically well-put-together record, yet lack the legs to really be a go-to listen for me. And with that, Snail's House Lumi uh, album is going to score a Bowtide 6. Now we got Flume, uh, things don't always go the way you plan mixtape. Uh, surprise for sure, uh, but not the most exhilarating one at that. Uh, writing itself as a mixtape uh, full of unfinished and never released tracks, the quality of tracks throughout uh, definitely follows suit. Um, this project absolutely feels like a track list of rejects uh, in both the uh, completion and tonality of the projects, of each individual song, I should say. Uh, rather than getting the most uh, experimental and risky side of Flume like we did on the Hi, This Is Flume, new mixtape, uh, this is arguably a safer set of releases of, uh, of whips, of old working projects. Uh, working process. <laughs> uh, with that, Flumes, uh, things don't always go the way you planned. Mixtape is going to score a Bowtide 6. Uh, then, crazily, we've got Rebecca Black's Let Her Burn. Uh, Rebecca Black is back and with vengeance on her mind. Uh, tackling the struggle of internet popularity and the shame that came with the Friday release, uh, she packages all her feelings into an easily digestible electro-pop format. Uh, it's very encouraging to see that her sort of career uh, took a whole 180 uh, as she is very much a full-fledged artist now. Uh, Rebecca Black's Let Her Burn album is going to score a Bowtide 7. Uh, then we've got Bass Jacker's Le Pez Bass uh, EP. Uh, this is what I imagine non-EDM listeners hear uh, when they say that EDM sounds just the same. Everything sounds the same. Uh, this EP is some of the most boring backbeats of, 20, of the 2020 so far and is paired with the most annoying melody lines of the year. Uh, touching on a few different genres, this EP manages to make all of them sound horrible, honestly. Uh, the only thing going for this EP is that it isn't trying to be bad, right? Uh, but with that, the Bass Jackers Lepe's Bass EP is going to score a Bowtide 2. 
Uh, and then we've got uh, Kalela, the Raven record. Um, this is a truly fantastic uh, album, uh, but not something I see myself revisiting a whole ton. Uh, the soft ethereal vocals littered throughout the tracklist make for a euphoric listening experience, uh, yet kind of drag with constant playtime and back-to-back listens. Uh, production is clean, and I adore the R&B slash EDM fusion. Uh, even as even though I recognize that this isn't thematically aimed for me being a demographic of me being a straight white man, uh, I did find connection points all throughout. And with that, uh, Kalela's Raven album is going to score a bow tied eight. Uh, then we've got Zensei's Destination Heartbreak Part 2 EP. Uh, of all the short EPs from Zensei, this is the one that I uh, kind of got the least out of, I would say. I've always loved the lo-fi kind of trip-hop stuff, but these tracks are nothing more than simple beats. And with that, it scores a bow tied five. Then we've got Caroline Polachek, uh, Desire, I Want to Turn Into You. Uh, in what feels like the quintessential alt-pop record, Caroline uh, brings a variety of high-quality vocal performances and backing production. Uh, sensual at times, grand in others, and constantly lovable. Uh, the range in which this record aimed for was ambitious, yet hit all the marks. And with that, this album's going to score a bow tied eight out of ten. Uh, moving on to Tasaki's uh, song to play, songs to play aloud. I'm pleasantly surprised with how much I enjoy this EP. Honestly, Tasaki has quite a unique blend of trap and dubstep sound design that is constantly kind of having you guess and. I would say intrigued, um, more so for the most part. This EP, this EP in particular is actually my favorite Tasaki project to date, as he opts in for a more kind of mindless, not so serious tone. And with that, Tasaki's songs to play loud EP is going to score a bow tied seven out of ten. Then we got Complexive with the Pixel Skies album. Pixel Skies uh, is is Complexive's uh, debut album, in which he relies heavily on the kind of pitchy keyboard solo similar to that of a Haywire or Glacier. I really love the melody lines and instrumentation on the record, but felt that there wasn't much other than that. Uh, considering that Complexive is a fairly up-and-coming artist, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And with that, it'll score a Bowtide 6. Then we've got uh, Rossi's Heaven's Door EP. Uh, the debut project from trap producer Rossi is out, and it's a bit of a mess. Uh, with melodies and synths ripped right from pretty much Alice in Wonderland's discography, there isn't really much to hold on to here. And on top of it all, the mixing and mastering makes for a very dry and underwhelming feeling project. And with that, Rossi's Heaven's Door EP is going to score a bow tide 4. Uh, and then we've got Silent Child, the Graduation EP. Balancing a darker tonality with poppy synth licks, Graduation sounds ultimately non-committal. Uh, it feels like there is an internal push and pull happening where the project doesn't quite know if it's going for that kind of full pop or full dark sound. Uh, and I'm sure others may find these releases appealing in that sense, kind of appealing. Uh, appealing, I should say, not repealing, uh, but it just felt lackluster to me. And with that, this EP is going to score a bow tied six. Uh, moving into the big ones, uh, we've got Skrillex, Quest for Fire. I've done a full, uh, full review of that somewhere in the title cards here if you want to see the full review. But, uh, my kind of through line, ultimate kind of end phrase here is that, uh, it is, uh, Quest for Fire is undoubtedly Skrillex's most put together, intentionally crafted, straight up best record to date. Uh, teetering the lines of many genres and tones, Skrillex has taken what's already worked in the industry and fine-tuned it create, to create his own soundscape. Uh, while foundationally a bass, house, and hybrid trap record, uh, Skrillex found a way to give uh, the community, the, the EDM community, and the commercial listeners exactly what they wanted. Uh, no longer Skrillex, the kind of dubstep guy that everyone's kind of know, uh, he's prolonged his longevity, or he's proven his longevity and his creative production. And with that, this album scores a bow tied eight. And on the flip side of that, we've got Skrillex's Don't Get Too Close LP. Uh, this one just didn't quite hit the mark. Uh, we saw the creativity and intentionality that Skrillex can go for with a record literally the day prior uh, with Quest for Fire, but this one just feels kind of off. The neutered vocal performances and dull beats uh, makes this album just not that great. Uh, with that, it scores a bow tied 4 out of 10. Then we've got Camouflage's In Plain Sight EP. Camouflage brings a bodaciously fun house EP to the masses with this In Plain Sight. Uh, with catchy hooks and bright vocals, this EP is quite a blissful listen, I would say. Uh, at only four tracks and under 12 minutes, Camouflage doesn't waste a single second on this project. Uh, this EP is going to score a Bowtide 8 out of 10. Then we've got uh, <laughs> Half an Orange, Mostly We Grow Trilogy album. 
The uh, trilogy of the Mostly We Grow uh, EPs have been repackaged into an album format, uh, and with no new tracks, I don't really understand the purpose of this existing. Uh, that being said, as a holistic album, it has many ups and downs. Uh, it just makes so much more sense to have these as three individually packaged smaller projects uh, as they once were to make it feel more cohesive in that sense. Um, but put all together, it just sounds a little bit jumbled, I would say. And in the end, uh, this album is going to score a bow tied 5 out of 10. Then we've got uh, Akos, Ekios, I want to say, uh, Bloodlust EP. I keep telling myself I'm going to try the base world of EDM uh, that I don't enjoy generally, and I still don't see a reason why this is loved uh, in any capacity. The tracks here feel empty and are stressful to listen to, and the synths just feel too rigid. Um, I'm looking. I'm really, I'm really trying to find what makes these EPs and stuff like it enjoyable, and I, I just can't do it. Uh, and with that, this will score a bow tied three out of ten. Then we've got Amber Runs, How to Be Human. Uh, the fourth studio album from indie rock band Amber Run is their most commercial one yet. I've always loved their kind of raw and personable lyrics that have often been rooted in a faith that I also share. Uh, and while I still enjoy this record, it feels a little bogged down by the sense of wanting to please. And with that, Amber Run's album is going to score a bow tied 6 out of 10. Uh, and then we've got Gorillaz, Cracker Island. Uh, and what feels like their most underwhelming uh, Gorillaz record yet, Cracker Island feels like a compilation of entirely filler tracks. Uh, some of the instrumentation and tones are intriguing, but the feeling flees just too quickly. Uh, this is truly one of the albums of all time from Gorillaz. Uh, and that will score a bow tied 6 out of 10. And the final thing that we reviewed this month, lots of stuff came out. Uh, we've got Logic's College Park. Uh, exploring the early days of his career, College Park is a skit-filled record with some of Logic's best bars and beats. It just seemed like uh, he's getting better and better with each new release, uh, this album being no expectation. Uh, dare I say that, er, no exception, <laughs> not expectation. Uh, dare I say this is Logic's best? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but that is it for the monthly roundup. Let me know what you think of any and all of these projects in the comment section below. Let me know if I miss anything. I will go back and look at things until the year is over for the most part. But uh, with that, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.